All right, everyone, welcome back to another video. Last time we left off with Einwatok Falls, February, um, right here. We're now on to Along the Highway to Tokyo, February 18th, 1944. Japan's blackest month. Probably no month in Japan's history has been so black as the month of February. American successes in the far-flung islands of the Pacific, from New Guinea to the Marianas, left no doubt of the offensive power of the United States. Premier Tojo told his cabinet that the situation was truly grave, and that the empire literally was standing at the crossroads of a rise or fall. Tojo then acted by dismissing chiefs of the army and navy general staff, Field Marshal Sugiyama and Admiral Nagoma. Uh, Nagona, my bad. In this picture, a task force moves in to seize Engebi on February 18th. And you can see the task force moving up, moving to their that island that they just talked about. Um, yeah, so the Japanese obviously. They didn't think they could win the war with the United States, per se. Uh, the main leading idea was that they could basically just draw it out until the American public was like, we don't really want to do this. But that doesn't happen. Um, the Japanese surrender, obviously. Um, but uh, so Tojo is not wrong here. It's definitely I had a rise or fall, and uh, the fall is c coming, and it's coming hard. The cost of an invasion. February 19th, 1944. We pay for Einwatok. Coast Guard and Navy medical corpsmen prepare to evacuate, evacuate marine casualties by landing craft back to transport boat tra transports during the seizure of Einwatok Atoll in the Marshalls on Saturday, February 19th. Note the line of blood plasma bottles above wounded men and an activity on the beachheads as supplies and reserve troops pour in. Americans took over the northwesternmost toll of the Marshall Group, extending the American spearhead another 400 miles in the direction of Tokyo. The American blows were following each other with a speed that gave the Japanese no rest. You can see all of the men getting taken care of as much as possible. Yeah, they're going to go back to transports, um, be kind of treated on the boats, but then try to be ferried back to the United States for further treatment. And yeah, the speed at which America moves, it really gives the enemy no time to fall back to another defensible position easily. Now, they do have defensible positions already set up, but the speed is so fast that they're just not expecting it, really. They're not expecting us to just be coming back so quickly. Front row view of a sea battle off Saipan. February 22nd, 1944. A task force in action. Detected by the foe as it sailed daringly into the rain of land-based planes, a United States Navy task force grimly fought off Japanese raiders for 11 hours. Then, in the teeth of the aerial storm, it launched its own planes to strike a smashing blow at Saipan and uh, Tinian Tien Tien in the Marianas on Washington's birthday. 1944. Uh, spitting death with precision and accuracy, the guns of ships in the task force shot down 14 Japanese torpedo bombers and dive bombers to bring the total score of enemy planes destroyed in the rain up to 135. Six U.S. Navy planes were lost. Five enemy ships were sunk or damaged in the blow, loosened by the same task force which had hammered Trook in the Carolinas group. So successfully, only five days previously in uh, in this action, 
studded picture, pilots and crewmen of a U.S. Navy carrier cheer ex ex uh, ex loot. I don't know how to pronounce that. Happily. We'll just go with happily. As guns of their task force send a Japanese plane to a blazing finish. Smoke from the burning plane and the, from anti-aircraft shells blend into leaden background provided by the overcast sky. The Americans were on their way and with such speed that the Japanese were badly confused. After the spectacular demonstration of America's might by the Airplane Carrier Task Force under the Rear Admiral Mark A. Minster, Premier Tojo dismissed the Chiefs of the Army and Navy General Staff, Field Marshal, Field Marshal Sugiyama, and Navy General... Uh, uh, no, an Admiral, my bad, of the fleet Nogano. Nogano. Uh, men whose positions corresponded to those of General Marshall and Admiral King in this country. Yeah, so these are powerful men, and they get sacked, basically. Um, they were losing quite a bit, and wasn't looking good for the Japanese. So they were sacked, um, replaced. That they were, that's what they thought was best. Two Kings of the Jungle. February 22nd, 1944. Reunion in Burma. Uh, Brigadier General Frank Merle Wright confers with Lieutenant General Joseph W. Stilwell as the campaign in northern Burma got underway. The American troops under command of General Merle had plunged into the jungle on Washington's birthday and started a 100-mile march into the Huk, Huk Wong Valley, where General Stilwell's Chinese troops already were pressing back the Japanese in a drive to clear the Little Highway route to China. The Americans had mules to haul their equipment. That's a weird little thing to point out, but yeah, of course, they had mules to do that. And these guys are probably happy to meet up, being like, hey, we're doing it, boyos. We're pushing these Japanese out. And uh, they did. They pushed the Japanese pretty hard. Um, the Japanese are kind of losing on all fronts now. Uh, even the Chinese fronts, which they were winning kind of pretty well before. But even there, they're being pushed out. The Nazis did a good job here. February 23rd, 1944. Slowing up the Allies. German engineers did a bang-up job of whipping off Wiping off the map, this road, winding near the summit of a steep hill in the path of the British 8th Army Drive through Italy. The road was wrecked when the Nazis blasted away a considerable chunk of the hill. But the unbreachable, uh, the unbeatable, my bad, 8th Army bypassed the road and pushed ahead as they had done in so many fronts since El Alamein. Yeah, so obviously they're just more or less teasing the Germans here. Like, oh, you guys did such a good job, but who cares? We're just going to go right on past your little work up here and uh, show you that you're not much, you're not as much as you think you are. A million tons of warships drop anchor. February 1944. Defying the Japanese. A million tons of U.S. naval might are given a visual meaning in this picture of part of the first U.S. Army war fleet to drop anchor in waters that were Japanese prior to the Pearl Harbor attack. Taken at Kualijan shortly after the Marshall Island atoll had been conquered. Yeah, it's just crazy to think about the tonnage here. Like they said, a million Tons of U.S. warships. Look at all the ships. Crazy. This is a big fleet and a powerful fleet for that. And the Japanese know it. Um, and they're kind of scared of it, really. Uh, the speed that the Americans move, the strength, uh, it's quite overwhelming in some degrees. 
And so the Japanese are like, hope, they're just trying to do whatever they can to hold back the Americans. And because, once again, they think if they can grind us down, that they could get a peace settlement out of this. But there's no peace settlement coming. And they'll find that out much more unfavorably later on. But with that, that's going to do it for this video. If you guys liked the video, leave a like. If you didn't, leave a comment. Tell me what I can improve on. I always appreciate your feedback. Uh, and as always, subscribe. It really does help out the channel. Thank you.